Hi guys, welcome. The participants are coming in, numbers are going up. Very exciting. <laughs> also, while we're waiting for everyone to come in, if you wanna type in the chat where you guys are from, we'd love to see where you're joining us from today. Went ahead and answered for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana, welcome. That's so exciting. Two Indianas. Wow. Yes, I know. And New Jersey, yes. Texas. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Out of state gang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a lot less traveling over, over Zoom than it is <laughs> in person. Arlington Rustin, oh, Rustin, right now. by me. Oh, the yep. was coming in now. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of us. Texas. I saw Georgia in there. Amazing. Oh, my roommate's from Atlanta. Oh. My yeah. last year's roommate was from Atlanta. <laughs> Some more Virginia people. Very exciting. Okay, it looks like, like our, another minute or so. Another minute, yeah, that else. sounds good. Our participant numbers are starting to level. <laughs> See if we catch anybody. All right, well, if anybody else joins, they'll just they'll they'll figure out what's going on it's pretty easy to catch up um hi guys welcome so much uh welcome to your virtual william and mary tour thank you so much for joining us there's my english we're getting there um <laughs> it's been a long day full of classes it's a monday we're, we're vibing um yes. <laughs> thank you for joining us we wish this could be in person we wish that you guys could join us on williamsburg i was gonna say on a beautiful day but it got kind of cloudy and started to rain so like maybe not the most beautiful day <laughs> Um, but this will have to do instead. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. Um, and then basically how this is going to work is we have a PowerPoint presentation that we'll share with you that will kind of guide us through our virtual tour of campus. We'll talk through everything. Um, and then if you have any questions along the way, you can stick them in the Q and A feature, um, which somebody just did. Um, and we will answer them as they go. So as you have questions, drop them in there and we'll answer them as they apply. Um, but first we're gonna go around and introduce ourselves. My name is Maddie. I am a junior here at William & Mary. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. So out of state gang represent. Um, I study biology and environmental science and we love to share fun facts about ourselves. So a fun fact about me is that Right before the world shut down in March of last year, I was flying home on spring break. I was in Florida with my parents flying back to Boston and Bill Belichick, head coach of the New England Patriots, you know, just like casual guy was on my flight with us. And I was like, so starstruck. I'm a huge Pats fan. I was like freaking out the whole time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> um, I guess I can go next. So my name is Nawate Jr. as well. Um, I'm from Vienna, Virginia. My family just moved to Alexandria, so still a Nova. Um, I'm double major, did I already say my major? I nope, not yet. I'm double majoring <laughs> in international <laughs> relations and economics. And a fun fact about me um, is that I grew up in Switzerland and Ethiopia. So, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, and I'm last. So, um, hi, my name is Alicia. I'm a junior. I'm majoring in neuroscience and minoring in business management. I'm also from the Northern Virginia area from like Fairfax County, Fairfax area. And um, on campus, I have um, involvements and I have uh, on campus jobs as well. So if anyone has any questions about either of those at any points, feel free to send those in the chat. I'd love to talk about the things that I'm involved with. So that's gonna be global medical brigades, uh, social sorority and a service fraternity along with the figure skating club. And then I also work as a group fitness instructor and as a resident assistant. So those are my involvements. And then a fun fact about me, I think it's really funny now that I'm a group fitness instructor, but there was one group fitness class, it was a yoga class and I fell asleep in it twice and I totally like got up and 
pretended as if I would, I knew exactly what I was doing. And I tried to be so slick about moving back into the position, but you know, when you fall asleep twice in one class, it just becomes a fun fact. <laughs> zen, you're <laughs> achieving your Zen. <laughs> exactly. So Zen, so Zen. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and share our PowerPoint. Boom. Guys, I've gotten so good at Zoom over this past year. I'm going to put it on my resume from now on. It's fantastic. <laughs> All right, this is our virtual tour. Um, so as I said before, we're just going to go through this PowerPoint, talk a little bit on each slide, let you know all the deets, what's going on, all that fun stuff. Um, so to start off a little bit about the history of William and Mary, we are the second oldest college in the country just after Harvard. We were uh, founded in 1693, so like a long, long time ago. Every year we celebrate our charter day. It's in February, it's a really great time because um, we're quite the oldies. As you can see on this map, this is a map of campus. Um, our oldest, oldest parts of campus is right here. That's the Wren building. We call it ancient campus. Um, then you break down into old campus, which includes the sunken gardens and some of our humanities buildings. The sunken garden is like our quad. So on a nice day, students covering the sunken gardens, hammocking and trees, playing frisbee, playing spike ball, all that fun stuff. And then as you wedge out from there, you get to new campus. So like our library is over here. Here's our football stadium. Um, and all that fun stuff. So the next slide has some pictures of everything. So, uh, I mean, on a, on a normal tour, normally walking around, you'd get to see all of this and clearly that's not the case this year. So just kind of to get a feeling of what it would look like if you were walking around on this tour, these are a lot of the different sites that you would see. Um, just going through that, picture right in the middle of the building. That's the Wren building that Maddie was sharing about. It's our, our oldest part of campus and it's the oldest building. Most students always try to take one class in there by the time they graduate, just because it's something that's very special to us here at William & Mary. And then besides that, if you just kind of look around, it's very clear that our campus has a very big kind of center and a natural type of feel. So even though the student population is a bit smaller than other schools, what's really nice is it's a very large campus, like in, in size, in, not in students, but like in an actual size. And so it allows for a lot of trees, a lot of outdoor spaces. So this is the kind of feel that you would get walking around all the time on campus. I, one of the things that drew me to William & Mary was the green space. That was a huge draw for me, something that I definitely knew that I needed for myself. Um, and I talk to my friends all the time. I get lost in the woods. We're surrounded by acres and acres of woods. Um, and I just wander through the college woods. We have wonderful trails and I just like set up a hammock and I'll be like, this is my spot for the afternoon um, and just like retreat from college life for a little. So it's very fantastic having this much greenery. Yeah, it's also definitely um, the size of the campus makes it so easy to go from one end of the campus to the other. I'd say it takes like maybe 20 minutes. I don't know about you guys, maybe 15 if I'm walking fast, um, but it's definitely a like very good size campus to walk around, so. Um, so in terms of academics, um, William and Mary is a liberal arts school and we go off of the call curriculum. So um, the call curriculum is basically um, when you're a freshman, you have to take a call 100 and a 150. So a call 100 are those um, writing based or discussion based classes. Um, and they're typically about 20, 25 students. Um, and then the call 150 is more writing based. and uh, it is, they're designed to help you like kind of step out of your comfort zone and out of your major. So my call 100 was a class called Toxic Narratives, which was basically um, how like environmental toxicity is portrayed in literature, which I had no clue going into it. It's not, has nothing to do with my major, but it was very interesting. So <laughs> that was great. Um, and then the call 200s, there are three of them that we have to take. So there's the natural world and quantitative reasoning, which are NQRs, and then CSIs, it's like your culture, societies, and then individual. And then um, the last one is arts, letters, and values. Those are like more of your arts classes, and you have to take three of them, and then one in each of the sections, and then one extra one in whichever one you want, so. 
And then I don't know if you guys want to add anything else about the calls. Yeah, no, absolutely. So for the calls, um, like Dwani said, it's really cool because you have the opportunity to take classes outside of your major, but at the same time, if you want to take one in your major to add on to an elective, you're more than welcome to do that. And it's really great because it just allows you to kind of expand and try things out that you might not otherwise do. And just on a personal note, so being, you know, STEM in business, I think the arts one kind of scared me. I was like, oh my goodness, how on earth am I going to fulfill that requirement? But what's so great is that within those um, kind of categories that were described, there are so many different departments that offer classes that count towards those. So for example, arts, letters, and values was the one that I was a little bit more worried about fulfilling because a lot of my major and minor classes did fulfill the um, NQR, the CSI options, which are more of the um, kind of like social and kind of sciencey types of ones. But what's really cool is in the arts, one of that was offered was a philosophy class all surrounded like about healthcare. And so for me, that was something that was incredibly interesting and exciting. So even if one of those categories might not seem like it's something that you want to be studying or, you know, it makes you a little bit nervous, there are always ways that you can find it in a different department. And there are lots of different options available for that. Yeah, and then to kind of complete your time in the call system, um, we also have a call 300 and a call 400. So the call 300 classes are centered around like expanding your global mindset. So that's oftentimes students will fulfill that through study abroad. Um, but if you don't want to study abroad, there are plenty of call 300 classes that are offered on campus that you can take as well. And then your call 400 is like your senior capstone. Um, so you'll take one call 400 for each um, major that you have. So if you're a double major, you'll take one in each um, to just kind of like seal off your time within that department. Um, they're usually small classes, like 15 person classes. Um, and a lot of people will try and take them with like their favorite professor from that department. Um, and they're usually highly specialized classes that the professors are really passionate about teaching. So they're a really great time as well. And then to kind of segue into research, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. I've been involved in two different undergraduate research programs um, since I've been at William & Mary. Uh, research is very easy to get involved with on campus. It's one of the things that drew me to William & Mary. Um, the way I first got involved with research was I had my um, faculty advisor, like my major advisor, and he was talking about what was happening in his lab. And I was like, hey, can I do that? And he said, sure. And then next thing I knew, I was working in his lab and it was a really great time. I got to do field work. I was studying frogs, you know, everybody's dream studying frogs. Um, so I did that for my sophomore year. And then I'm currently working with the Institute for Integrative Conservation, which is a new area um, on, on William & Mary's campus. So if you're interested in conservation and environmental science, I highly recommend checking them out. Um, there, it's a really cool new area and I'm doing a year long project with them. I'm getting paid for it, which is incredible. Um, Exciting. And I get to work with an outside conservation partner. So I'm working with people who work in the industry. I'm having weekly meetings and really starting to get a feel of what it's like to work in conservation. Um, and actually, right now is Undergraduate Research Month at William & Mary, which is a really exciting time. Um, usually we do a giant poster presentation in the ISC, which is the building in the bottom left-hand corner, um, our main science building on campus. Um, and all different students from all different departments come out and present their research from the past year. This year it's virtual. So there's tons of um, videos that are getting put out, small, short research videos. And we'll have the link to send you if you wanna see any of the cool stuff that any William & Mary students are conducting research on. I have a presentation on Friday, pretty nerve wracking. It'll be great, wow. having a good time. Yes, good luck, you're gonna kill it. <laughs> Um, so lastly, study abroad. Um, um, so William & Mary is the number one public university for undergraduate study abroad, as you see here. Um, the Reef Center is a really great resource for that. Um, they're very helpful over there and they have so many William & Mary programs, but also can they can also help you get in touch with outside um, programs, which is really great. I unfortunately did not get to go abroad because of COVID, but um, they do have um, the study abroad program can also help you fulfill the call 300 requirement that we just talked about. So yeah, and I think everyone I know that has studied abroad has had a really great opportunity. They loved it there. And the Reef Center can also help with um, 
finding you scholarships and the financial aid for that. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and take on our SWEM library. So this is located on the newer part of campus when we started off at the beginning. So on kind of like the further side from our ancient campus and we have so many resources available here. So normally we would walk in and we'd see it. So I'll do is kind of like try to walk us through what that would look like. So normally when we'd all walk into the library, we would pass by our aromas coffee shop which is great because it's somewhere on campus and we'll talk more about dining in a little bit, but it's somewhere that you can use part of your meal plan to get coffee, to get food, to get snacks, which is really, really great. And then walking in further to that first floor is normally where we'd stop. And we would be kind of right in front of a ton of computer desks. So on that first floor, you're able to sit down at a computer, do your work, or on either side, the left and the right, walking further in, there are these large areas with tables so people can do group projects, work together, just sit with friends. And on that first level, that's kind of a perfect space for that because on that floor, we have no kind of limitations for how loud you can be. So it allows for those kind of group dynamics. And then like a lot of other schools do, as you progressively get higher in the floors, it turns it starts to be a little bit quieter as you go up. So a whisper level on the second floor and on the third floor, it's a very quiet space. And that way every student has a space in the library that's effective for them in their kind of studying habit and the routine that they need when they're getting their work done. And then additionally, we have a basement and in the basement we have our a media center, which is an awesome place because you're able to check out different media equipment. All you need is your student ID. And even if you don't know how to use it, you can check out like a professional camera and they'll show you how to use it, which is really fun. And then you can hold on to that for about a week and then just come back and return that. On the first floor, in addition to having the coffee shop and kind of those computers that I talked about, we also have our uh, tribe tutor zone and we have our writing resource center. Our writing resource center is free for students and you can come in at any stage of your writing project or quite frankly, even a presentation if you have that. And what's great is you can come in with, you know, here's my assignment. I'd like some help kind of figuring out where I wanna go with this or with your final draft. So really anywhere along the way. Our tribe tutor zone, while this is a resource that's available, it isn't free, but it's also like, it's also kind of good that's not free because students work there and they're being paid for that. So it all works out well in the end. And what's really great about the Tribe Tutor Zone, I have been so happy with any experience that I've had going there and getting tutored. And the tutors themselves are so incredibly qualified for it. Professors have to actually recommend a student. So they have to not only have gotten an A in that very specific class, so not just in any, you know, let's say it's a chemistry tutor in any chemistry class, but specifically for that class. And then they're recommended. So they know what they're doing. They're doing a really good job at, at tutoring over there. And then the last things we have are the circulation desks. So if you want to check anything out, the research desk, similar to the Writing Resource Center, if you need any help with research, they're happy to help you there. And then we have a special collections that kind of rotates through of different things that we have, we have available there. And then it's not written here, but I also remembered in the basement, in addition to that media center, we also have a print shop. So if you want to print out anything like a big poster board, um, like Maddie was talking about for you know the, the research, you're able to do something like that. Or my sweet mate last year fell in love with on Pinterest, there were these little baby animals, but it had like, they were blowing bubble gum and she just fell in love with them. She's like, I have to have this all over my wall. So she went over, she printed them out. They covered our sweet room. And I thought it was, it was so, so adorable. So you can do it for kind of academic reasons or personal reasons. And then the last little bit about SWEM, which is great, is you can book study rooms for groups. So in addition to having those spaces on the first floor, we just have lots of tables in this open space. If you want to have a space that's a little bit quieter, you're able to reserve those rooms and work as a group in those rooms. And there are also smaller rooms for just individuals. So you can also have a blocked off space for yourself. So overall, what's so great about SWIM is we have so many different options and different spaces that everyone can study in. So everyone kind of finds what works well for them. And normally there'll be a spot available there, which is really great. 
I'm excited to get back to the point where swim is like you can walk in and you'll just like find someone you know and then you can just chat with someone that's always my favorite thing it should be like getting work done but it's actually like I'll walk in grab a coffee and be walking to where I need to be and I'll like see a friend that I haven't seen in a while and get to catch up with them um so I incorporate socialization into my swim time I think it's only (laughs) no it absolutely is I also just with COVID it's a little bit different um I'm sure for like everyone who's listening, it's it's different back home too, but on campus too, we're not seeing everyone as frequently as we would be. We'd all be giving tours and about every five minutes be like, oh, hi, hey, as you're walking through. And I think for me, what was so awesome is SWEM is such a central point for so many students. And we we go there, we, we work together, or we just like work with friends. And that was what I had actually this weekend. I walked through and in the time of walking from the front door to like the left side of the first floor, I got stopped by six friends and we had conversations. So it started to feel like a normal year again, which was so exciting. (laughs) All right. Um, So these are some of the wonderful facilities that we have on campus outside of the library. So this building in the top left picture is the McCoy Tyler Wellness Center. Um, It opened when we were all freshmen. So fall of 2018 was its first, um, its first semester. It's a really great place. It houses um, our, uh, our health center, it houses um, counseling center, and then it also just has a variety of like yoga rooms, meditation rooms. It has really pretty views out the back. It has like all these glass windows and you're just like looking out into trees. Um, It's a really fantastic space. We also have our rec center, which is the middle picture on the right is part of the rock wall. Um, So we have a rock wall. Obviously there's a pool, there's a bunch of machines, um, a bunch of free weights, basically anything you could possibly need. And right now during COVID, they're doing a fantastic job with keeping the rec safe. So it's still open. There's limited signups and you sign up for a specific time slot. And then they close it, I believe it's every 90 minutes to do um, a whole deep clean. Alicia, I don't know if you want to talk about it because the recs kind of, you, you vibe there. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, being a group fitness instructor, I've definitely spent quite a bit of time there. But you're absolutely right. After 90 minutes, they clean everything down. And they also do the same for the group fitness classes. They're seriously staggered and it allows time for all of the equipment to be sprayed down and everything is cleaned very thoroughly. So it's really nice that we still have access to all of these resources. And the group fitness classes are still available. We have them online and in person. So it just depends on what somebody's comfortable with. So you have both options and the in-person ones are just limited a bit more as well. Like Maddie was saying for the general reservations for the gym, when you go in, we have the same thing for classes where it's just a smaller number of students. That way everyone is spaced out quite a bit. We actually space everyone out by 10 feet apart and everyone wears um, their masks at all times when they're in the gym, with the exception of like when you're taking a sip of water and then we, we put them back on. Yeah, as someone who frequents the group fitness classes, let me just say, give a shout out to all those group fitness instructors out there. They're fantastic. It's super fun because you get a mix of students and then also some professors are fitness instructors, yep. um, <laughs> which is just such a good time. It's like you can have chem class, the professor, and then go to his body pump class at night um, and just get to see two different sides. <laughs> it's a really great time. Um, it definitely and then, is. The last thing listed here is Sadler Center, which is like our student union on campus. It houses one of our main dining halls, a theater space, Cozy, which is like a sandwich place, um, a little convenience store, and then also like a games desk. So if you want to play pool, there's video games, there's board games that you can check out. All of that's free for students to use. And Sadler is just basically a hub of a ton of different offices on campus. So if you need to find someone, um, they probably work in Sadler. Um, And we're actually in the middle of some nice Sadler expansion. So Sadler's getting bigger. They're giving us more seating. It's all very exciting. Um, And I can't wait to see what the expansion looks like. Another really great resource in Sadler is the Career Center, um, which is like kind of like on the side of Sadler, but it's a beautiful building and they are so helpful there. They can help you with resume building. Um, You can go if you just need advice for like your cover letter. I know I went there a lot um, sophomore year, so I was really struggling and they can also help you. um, I So freshman year, I had an interview that I had to do and I needed business professional clothes, but I didn't really have any. I didn't want to buy any. So you can also rent 
clothes from there and all you have to do, it's free. Um, you have to bring it back dry clean, but the Career Center is a really great resource and it's there to help you from once you first get on campus. And I think it goes up to like maybe two years after you graduate. I know it goes until like when you're an alumni, but yeah, they're really great resources there as well, so. Amazing. Okay, so I would love to talk about housing as a resident assistant. This is something I've been incredibly familiar with this year. So when it comes to freshman housing, because I think that's probably what almost everybody who has joined us today is interested in, and then we'll talk a little bit more past that point, but normally what a freshman kind of housing experience will look like is living on a hall with lots of students and then having a shared bathroom. When it comes to your, um, your roommate or your, your dorm mate. Uh, a lot of people will choose to do one of our two main options where it's either you can go random and that involves filling out a survey where you can kind of say what your tendencies are and what you're interested in, what you're looking for from a roommate and out of a roommate. And then the other option is selecting somebody and requesting to live with them. So people can either come in knowing somebody from their hometown or their school, or a lot of the times as I'm sure a lot of you are probably very aware being in, at this stage, it, there are Facebook group chats that are started when people are accepted and people will start posting, you know, I'm so-and-so here, are my interests and what I'm looking for in a roommate and people can connect that way. I personally did the kind of Facebook route and I was able to find my roommate, but I also know friends that went random and both of which seem to be really, really good options. I think most of the time people tend to be pretty happy with who they end up with. And on the flip side of that, if for some reason, the rooming situation seemed great at the beginning and then it just, it's not working and even working with your RA, something can't be resolved. Please know that if it's really not working out, Residence Life will help to move you and change things around. So you'll never be kind of living in a situation that you're not comfortable with. So even, even though we're saying that like most of the time it sounds great in that kind of like off chance that it's not, the school will work with you to make sure that you're able to thrive in this environment and have that good community kind of feeling and belonging within your building. And then in addition, I'll kind of like talk through the points, but in, in general, uh, students live on campus, they're freshmen and sophomore year, and that's actually required. And then past that point, you can choose to live off campus, but still about 75% of students do remain on campus. And in addition to that, we have our building set up. So I explained for the most part, you have a freshman hall. It's one long hall and a shared bathroom. And as you get older, you have options for buildings that are more suite style. So I'm currently living in a suite right now. So it's one room, a shared bathroom, and then a room on the other side. And then we also have apartment options available as a part of living. It's on campus, but it's just slightly removed, but it's still considered on campus. And that's an option that you can get through the school. And when you are living in that kind of hall style where the bathroom is in the hall, you're also going to have a study lounge, you're gonna have a laundry and kitchen all on the same floor. And then you're gonna have a social lounge as well. And you'll have similar facilities as you move up and you have different styles like those suite styles, but it might just not be on every single floor. Normally in those buildings, you'll have one laundry room um, like on like one of the main levels and, and a kitchen on every floor as well. And then the last little bit that hits on the slide is orientation. So orientation is something that's so incredible here. Uh, Nora, you said you're an OA. Would you like to talk about that? Sure. So okay. um, I'm an OA, which an OA is an orientation aid. And essentially what it is, is every hall has anywhere from two to four OAs. Um, and basically what, so the OAs are sophomores through seniors and their role is basically to help um, aid with the transition into college. And so orientation happens. Um, it starts the day of move-in and it goes up until the first day of classes. Um, so it's about five days, I believe. And essentially what it is, is we really um, try to make the new students um, just really aware of all of the resources that are available on campus. And they can be long days, but it is, I think, from my experience at least, and I'm sure both of you can attest to this, that you end up getting very close with your hall, which is really nice. Um, I know when I came in to freshman year, I didn't really know that many people. I had a few friends from high school, but none of them were in my hall. Um, so I only knew my roommate who were now best friends, which is great. But um, <laughs> we ended up getting very close with our hall. And I think 
without like the structure of orientation, I don't know if I would have been able to have that. So yeah. That's awesome. It must be really cool to like be on the other side of that now being in OA now. It's very fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I can totally vouch for orientation working super well. I came to William & Mary not knowing anybody um, coming from Massachusetts. Like there weren't other people that were coming down with me. Um, and my freshman hallmates are still some of my best friends. Junior year, I'm living with one of my freshman hallmates. So like it really shows you we stick together. Um, and I'm also still really close with all three of my OAs that I had and I keep in contact with them. Um, so the guidance doesn't stop after the first day of classes. It really continues on um, as long as you wanted to. For me, going on three years, still asking questions about life all the time. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. All right, so this is dining. Speaking of one of my OAs, one of my OAs and best friends, the two people in the bottom left-hand corner. Love them. Got to give them a shout out when I do a virtual tour. Um, so we have three dining halls on campus. Two are swipe in all you can eat style and one is a la carte and they're spaced out pretty evenly. You got like one on each end and one in smack dab in the middle. Um, so no matter where you live, there is a dining hall close to you. Um, I am partial to the calf or the commons. That's my personal favorite. That's where I lived freshman year. So I really love the calf. Um, how our meal plans work is it's basically a ratio of meal swipes to dining dollars. So meal swipes you use at our dining halls, dining dollars you use at a variety of places. Some we've mentioned already like the coffee shop and swim, the aromas, um, cozy convenience stores. And then yes, we do have a Chick-fil-A that's right off campus that accepts dining dollars. It's very exciting. Um, so when you're a freshman, you basically get a choice out of three plans that change the ratio of the swipes to the dining dollars. So you can have unlimited swipes and you just get fewer dining dollars. You can do 19 swipes a week and then have more dining dollars or 175 swipes for the semester and the most dining dollars. I am a block 175 girl. That's what worked best for me. Um, but you really get to choose whatever works best for you. And there's a little bit of a grace period um, for the first few weeks of classes. So if you think you're gonna barely go to the dining hall and then you realize, oh no, I'm there all the time, you can change your plan or vice versa, figure out what works best for you. Um, my description of dining hall food, it's food. Um, is it the best food in the world? No, I'm not gonna lie to you all. Um, do I feel like I'm banging my head against a wall because it's horrible? No. Um, I think it is what you make it. And there's a lot of really great stations that you can kind of customize to make your own. Um, so I really loved at any time of day, you can always get a grilled chicken breast and you can always have a salad bar. So if all else failed, I would make myself a killer salad with some grilled chicken on top and it hit the spot every single time. Um, so there is always something that I could find that would make me happy. I don't know if you guys have any specific dining stories to share. <laughs> Well, I think, I mean, I would absolutely agree. It's, it's not the best thing in the world, but on my like kind of personal, I definitely have quite a few uh, restrictions when it comes to, to food and something that I do appreciate is they do make a serious effort to have different options available for different dietary restrictions. So kind of no matter what your allergies are, or if you have any intolerances, uh, you'll be able to find things to eat at every dining hall and you'll always have options available for that. So even though it's not, it's not the very best, but I also think it's getting slightly better as time goes on. I don't know if you guys feel like, yeah, okay, we're often in that. Um, but like you, we're able to find something that works for us. And like Maddie said, normally it kind of comes down to like a staple meal. It's like if, you know, all other stations fail, like you'll always have something, but I think that that's something I appreciate is the effort that they make for people that have different restrictions. Yeah, definitely, I would agree. I think um, it is, kind of what you would expect from a college dining hall but it I've never found that I haven't like found anything that I want to eat there um so yeah I'd say it's it's pretty good all right um so I guess I can talk about extracurricular activities um so like we kind of talked about what we're involved in there are 450 clubs and student organizations on campus and I say that there's always something for everyone. Um, they're different multicultural groups, religious groups, um, club sports. You can do intramurals, which I did my freshman year. I did intramural soccer. 
Um, I was not very good. <laughs> so I was on the bench quite a lot, but it was still very fun. Um, so you, there's always that to do. Um, and then William & Mary is actually a D1 school. Um, so very exciting. Um, the athletic events are pretty fun to attend. I went to a swim meet last, I think it was last year. Yeah, they're very fun, um, which I had never been to a swim meet before. So it was very exciting to go to. Um, and then what else? Um, I would say also that even if you can't find a club or an organization that you think is for you, they're pretty easy to start. Um, I think, yeah, anything from you? I yeah, think just, to, I'll go for it. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Maddie. You're so good. I was just going to say to touch on Greek life quickly. Um, so as it says there, about 30% of our campus belongs to some type of Greek letter organization. Um, all three of us are actually involved in social sororities. Um, I've found it's really contributed a lot to my time at William & Mary. It's been a really great area for me to find leadership opportunities um, and expand my social networks. But I think that the size of 30% is at the point where if you want that community, it's there um, and it exists for you to join and it's definitely robust. But if you don't want to join Greek life, you're in no way like pushed out of social life at all. There's still plenty to do and it's not an exclusive area of campus. Um, all Greek events are open. So if there's a philanthropy event that's happening, anybody on campus can attend it. Um, it's not closed off to the Greek uh, uh, fraternity sorority community. Yeah. In addition to that, and like Maddie said, like all of us happened to be, which was kind of surprising when we <laughs> hopped on and started chatting with them. I was like, oh, we're all juniors. We're honest. We're already like, it's so bizarre with it being 30%. Um, and we have uh, tour guides in every single age age group. But for, for me personally, I actually only just joined this semester as a junior. So I think that that kind of just says a lot. I think for me, I felt very comfortable, even though I wasn't in the standard, you know, freshman year or sophomore year, it was just something I was interested in doing at this point. Um, I had the experience of not being in a sorority for two years. And something that was incredible is the fact that this school, just very much so as a student body and as an institution pushes the whole idea of belonging and community. So by not being a part of it by, like, by no means did I ever feel that like, I wasn't like in in any way or that I couldn't join. I still was able to like go with my friends to certain events and everyone within like different sororities or different fraternities, what's great is it's very much so not clicky where people are able to kind of bond and create like really great relationships. But then most friend groups are a kind of like hodgepodge of people in different organizations, people that are not affiliated with Greek life, those that are. And so I think that that's something that's really cool about our school and you know, I've been able to have kind of both sides and I don't really think as much as like, I, I definitely love like the experience that I've had so far in my sorority. I don't feel kind of that I belong less or more in any way. So really whatever seems to work best for you, you're still going to have an incredible experience on our campus. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, because as you can see, there's woods pictured and lake pictured, which is yes. what I love. <laughs> um, so you might be thinking, Williamsburg, Virginia, what the heck can you do there? Let me tell you, there is more than you would think. Um, Williamsburg is by no means like a large city, um, but there are people here and people come see us. Um, that is mainly due to the fact that we live right across the street from Colonial Williamsburg which if you've told me when I was little that I would go to college ac across the street from a colonial reenactment town, I would have said, huh, you're kidding. Um, but Colonial Williamsburg or CW as we like to call it um, is really, really fun. Uh, it's a great place to go on runs. It's a great place to go on walks. If you're feeling extra historical, um, all students get free passes to CW so you can go explore and have a good time. Um, if you're super into it, it's there. If you're not super into it, you can pretend it doesn't exist and like your life will be the same. Um, beyond CW, uh, that picture in the top left corner is of Lake Matoka, which is the area in the college woods that I was talking about earlier. So like our back half of campus is Lake Matoka and the college woods. Um, which is a really fun area. They just opened up the boathouse again for the spring. So students get free access 
to canoes, kayaks, stand up paddle boards um, that you can sign up for and go do in the afternoons, which is something I really like to do with my friends. You can go on walks through the college woods, um, really great hikes and trails back there. Um, Jamestown Beach is really close by to campus. I went, we had a spring break day last Tuesday and me and my, some of my friends went to Jamestown Beach. It was a really good time. Um, if you're a roller coaster person, you got Bush Gardens, Water Country is also close by. Um, every year we do a Bush Gardens Day where students get reduced ticket prices and the school organizes buses to shuttle us to and from Bush Gardens, um, which is a good time. And then let me just say the restaurant scene in Williamsburg is like good. Um, new restaurants are popping up all the time. Um, a lot of them within walking distance of campus. If you want any recommendations, I'll give them to you. Go to Amber Rocks. It's my favorite restaurant in Williamsburg. They just opened, the owners of Amber Rocks just opened this store called The Bake Shop, which I've been going to too often. They make it's so bagels. good. <laughs> the good bagel in Williamsburg, what I've been waiting for for three years. Um, and we got all the different, if you want a Mexican restaurant, honey, we got them. There's like 80. Um, we that have and the pancake houses too. <laughs> we have the highest pancake house per capita in the country. Um, so we got them all, man. Williamsburg, it's the place to be. Let me tell you. <laughs> I've never had a moment that I was bored or I didn't know what I could do or where I could go in kind of every season. Maddie mentioned the fact that like the Colonial Williamsburg area, like people can like walk down it. I just sitting here thinking, realize in the past 48 hours, I think I've been down there four times. Once I was just sitting on that main street and I was studying outside with a friend. I grabbed lunch with my other friends the other day. I was walking down there with a friend last night and earlier that day we we're taking pictures with the tulip. So it's so great because it's so close and it kind of just feels like an extension of campus because you just like transitions from one right into the other. So that's something that's really exciting. And then also like in a different season, when it's the winter in that Colonial Williamsburg area, they have a pop-up ice skating rink. So for me personally, I'm like a, a figure skater and I was competitive before college and I'm on the club team. Um, that's something that's just like really fun. And for me personally, I love that, but I know a lot of students enjoy it as well. And this year they actually opened up free days for students to go down, which is super exciting. I don't know if that'll be offered next year, but I hope they have that going again because I was able to just go down three times with three different groups of friends and go skating all together with all the, like the twinkly lights. So that was a really fun time. There's definitely always something you can find to do in CW. I know this past mm -hmm. Sunday, I went to second Sundays for the first time, which is, was really fun. Um, they have like little vendors that go there and put up like tents and there's live music playing, which is my personal favorite. Um, Cause I could just, it was also a beautiful day. So I was just sitting out there with my friends. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, CW is Colonial Williamsburg. Um, and it was just beautiful. And I know one of my friends bought like um, soap that was made from goat milk, which I had never seen, but yeah, they have very fun vendors there. So I would Amazing. definitely recommend that. Right now in CW, there's baby sheep. Um, so like every day I see somebody visiting the baby sheep, putting it on like an Instagram story or Snapchat story or something like that. I yesterday. <laughs> I need to go see them before they get too big. You definitely do. It's like down Dog Street and then to the right. Store it away. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my goodness. Okay, I love traditions. Would you all be interested in like going through and sharing our favorite? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. So uh, here, I'll go ahead and just kind of point out what each of the pictures represent for different traditions that we have. And then the three of us will go through and share what our favorites are. So the first one in the top left corner, we have um, a picture from homecoming. So this is something that's really exciting. It happens in the beginning of the fall semester where alumni come back and we all get to celebrate together, which is really fun. You get to see like all the different generations of people that have been here. And then the one to the right of that, it's um, for graduation, they're crossing over the Crimdell Bridge. So that's something that holds like a lot of traditions here at school. And when you walk across it with either a friend or a romantic partner or sports teams will do it, entire classes will graduate and walk across it together. It kind of signifies that you're like forming a bond that's gonna last forever. So that's something that's really special. 
in the bottom left corner, you have convocation. So this is when the new incoming class comes in. You start on one side of that really old red building and you hear different um, speakers come up and talk. And then everyone walks through the building in one direction and the sunken gardens is filled with upperclassmen. Okay, this is my favorite. I'm gonna share a little bit more here since I'm on it already. But what's so incredible is you walk through that building and from like that building all the way down the sunken gardens which is our quad maddie was showing at the beginning it's lined up with upperclassmen you give everybody a high five in non-covid times um and everyone is just like letting you know like welcome like you belong here like we're so excited to have you and at the end they have a massive hand sanitizer bottle so everyone can like wash their hands at the end but for me that was something that was so incredible because you know, you get to William and Mary and you're surrounded by like so many incredible people. And as a freshman, you feel like the small person on campus, but from that, it makes you realize that we're all in it together and everyone's supporting each other. And it really is like one big tribe and team, which is incredible. And I think something that I thought was incredibly crazy was when I became a sophomore, I realized that we're like not asked or like like it's not mandatory to go and do this. Everyone is just told like, hey, this is happening at this time. And we just go and do it because we want to do it. And I thought that that was something that was so cool because I kind of thought it was like, hey, you guys have to be out there, but it's not that. Everyone does it because they they really want to be there and welcome in the next freshman class. So for me, that's something that is like very near and dear to my heart. And then the last two pictures quickly, um, we have a picture of our orientation aides, like Nawada is. And so they help kind of bring everybody through that orientation period and help with all the bonding and community building. And the last one, is the big picture of the fire. So that's our Yule log, which happens um, right before the end of the, the fall semesters around finals time. And it's a way for all of us to gather. And ultimately we all walk through with a little sprig of holly and we throw it into the fire symbolizing, you know, letting go of this year and welcoming in the next one. So those are all really cool traditions that we have here. I know I spoke on my favorite, Maddie and Nwade, do you guys wanna share which ones are yours? Yeah, so I I love convocation too. That one's probably my favorite. Like you said, the like camaraderie on campus is insane yeah. during that day. But I also really love Yule Log. Um, so Yule Log takes place during the weekend in between finals in the fall. So everybody, it's like it's getting cold in Virginia. Everyone's been studying. Um, and then for one night, everybody like comes out of hiding and we all gather in the Ren courtyard. Um, we sing songs, we get a, a story read to us by the college president, we do a giant let it go sing along with like a light show and it's like <laughs> the best way to release all your final stress. Um, different uh, heads of different faith organizations on campus come and share what the time means to them in their individual faith. And then, as we were saying, you get handed a sprig of holly, you get to walk through the Wren Great Hall um, in the beautiful Wren building, and you throw your holly in and you make a wish. Um, and it's just a wonderful festive time of year. Um, since we always leave in mid-December, we don't get the full Christmas effect um, or holiday season effect, but it's a really great um, like goodbye time to say to your friends one last like hurrah before you go home for the winter. Um, I really love you log. I would say so I was gonna say convocation as well um, just because I remember when I was a freshman um, it's normal to feel like a little worried and like scared and nervous it's your first day of college but I remember just like high-fiving everyone and I was smiling the entire time because I just felt so welcomed and like I belong and that I made the right choice. So that was exciting. But um, another one of my favorite traditions is homecoming, which is the top left image. And I just love homecoming because well, one, the parade is very fun. Um, so different student organizations will either have a float or I remember um, my freshman year, um, some of the different cultural organizations had like dance performances too, which was very exciting and fun to watch. Um, and I just love seeing all the alum come back and hearing how everyone um, loved their time at William and Mary and the school spirit that they still have post-graduation for me was really something that I enjoyed. Um, and it kind of just furthered this like idea of the community, the sense of community at William and Mary. So yeah, that's my favorite. 
All right, so that is the end of our slideshow. So I'm gonna stop sharing screen. Um, but before we say goodbye to you all, um, we like to end our tours by telling you all why we decided to go to William and Mary. So who wants to start? I'd be happy to share. So for me, I think it was kind of two main things that really drew me to William and Mary. There were obviously like so many other incredible like reasons to come, but for me, what it boiled down to was the kind of diversity that we have and how many kind of extracurricular and different opportunities that we have on campus. I was involved with some that were kind of unusual in high school. And I just thought that going to college that meant giving those things up and kind of just starting and creating kind of a slightly new identity in the activities that I took part in. But because we have so many organizations on campus, I was actually able to continue with every single one of them, which was so, so cool for me. And I love that it just kind of allows you to continue to be yourself, but also being an opportunity to, to grow and to develop as a person. And then the second bit was how truly it feels like a community. When I was going on my tour, I remember it was specifically on the terrace. So it's a kind of a part on campus that's right outside that Sadler building we were talking about. That's our student union. And there are just lots of tables out there. If you have umbrellas and students are just sitting out there kind of like studying, chatting, having meals that they take outside from the dining hall. And everyone was just talking with one another and a kind of, it was between classes so students were walking by and saying hello to one another and you could just feel that everybody was encouraging of one another and supportive and I was like okay this is what I, this is what I want from a school and as I've been here that's just been emphasized that much more I see it you know in a day-to-day -day basis which has been so so incredible and I'm I'm really happy that I chose to come here uh, because like I've seen that and it's it's hard in college, you know, everyone like goes through challenges. It's an, a new stage in life and the academics are definitely like a bit rigorous, but you're making it through and it's not, you know, it's me versus you in the class and how our grades are doing. It's a, hey, we're in this together. Let's study together. I want you to do your personal best. I want to do my personal best. And so I saw that and I just see it that much more as I continue to be here at William and Mary. Yeah. Um, mine is kind of similar. Um, so I'm from Northern Virginia and my high school had a lot of people that applied here um, and quite a few that ended up coming here, but none that I was very close with. And being the person that I am, I was like, I don't wanna go to William & Mary at all, but I'll still apply and see what happens. And then I ended up getting in and I came um, today for admitted students and I ended up getting a tour and being able to talk to older people as well. And I remember distinctly from what like set William & Mary apart from other schools for me was that everyone was so excited to talk about the school, like way more excited than I would have expected. Um, they were all so willing to help me. So many people gave me their phone numbers and were like, feel free to text me if you have any questions. And just um, the sense of community that I felt um, when talking to people that went here was just something I hadn't experienced before. And then on top of that, um, I remember they really put an emphasis on the liberal arts side of the school and how you're really encouraged to step out of your comfort zone and explore other classes that aren't within your major. And I thought that was pretty interesting because I didn't really know what I wanted to major in coming into college. Um, and I knew that William and Mary would push me to do that. So yeah, that's awesome. I also don't have, I feel like a lot of people will be like, I have this magical moment where I was walking on campus and like the sun came through the trees and I was like, <laughs> this is it, my home. Um, but I didn't necessarily have that. I was super indecisive when it came to college decisions. I like wanted more than anything to find a school to apply ED to, but I was too, I like couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, so I applied regular decision and then I came down for a day for admitted students like Nawatu was saying and um, I was walking around campus it was like this beautiful 80 degree day um, and all the students were so excited to see everyone the number of student volunteers involved in an in-person day for admitted students is like mind-blowing and they're all volunteers people do it because they want to for example, we give tours because we want to. We love talking about this school. Um, and I could really just sense that like love and community. And so I was walking with my dad um, and I just turned to him and I smiled and he was like, you really like it here, don't you? And I was like, I do. Um, so I put down my deposit. And then when I moved in in the fall, me and my dad were talking and he was like, I knew you were gonna come here from the first time we toured with your older sister. And I was like, 
what? <laughs> How? Um, and I was really glad that he let me make that decision myself, but he saw what I saw as well. The number one thing that I wanted out of a college was a place that would make me become the best version of myself. And whether that was academically, socially, personally, whatever, I wanted to become the best version of me. And I think the students and the faculty and the staff at William & Mary really allow each student to become the best version of themselves, both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, all of the different organizations that you can get involved with will really help you to further yourself personally and push you to excel in areas that you didn't think were possible. And then in the classroom, our professors are always there to help you. Students are always there to help each other to really push you to be the best version of yourself. So that's cheesy why we love William and Mary, um, but we do this because we love it and we love getting to talk to all of you. Um, so yeah that's the end of like the formal part of this um but we'll hang around if you guys have any last questions that you want to drop in the q a box um i'll drop my email in here as well we can all drop our emails i love Sounds getting good. um emails from prospective students it's like the most exciting email i could possibly get in my inbox Um, to answer the question, does the school ever feel too small? I think it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, I really liked the idea of not knowing everybody, but knowing enough people where I could walk across campus and see people that I knew. And I think that's definitely the sweet spot that William & Mary hits. If you're looking for like a massive school, this is not a massive school. We're about 6,800 no, that's a lie. At 6,000 undergrad is, I believe, the number that it is. Um, so I think it hits in a right sweet spot where I can walk across campus and run into people that I know without feeling like I know every single human being. I think I have the exact exact same answer, honestly. That's, that's what it is. It feels like so special, like when we're doing tours, especially that, you know, it feels like every five minutes there's someone's like, oh my gosh, hi. And you're like, hello. And you just like get to talk with them. And that's a really, really fun time. But at the same time, you're passing plenty of students that you, you don't know. Um, just to answer the next question that we had come in about William & Mary and whether or not we accept AP credits, um, the school does for different AP classes, kind of it's different scores are, are taken as credits. So um, all I'll take is a quick search online. I don't have that. Um, link handy right now, but if you just like William & Mary AP credits and it'll show you which classes they'll accept credit for and what score is needed to get that credit. Um, the difference between ED1 and ED2 is just the date that you send in your application. So ED1, you're sending it in the fall, so you'll get your decision back in December. ED2, you're um, sending in your application on in January and you get back in March, I wanna say. Um, but it's still the same like early decision binding. It's just when you're submitting that. Um, how often do we go to the beaches nearby? I think it really depends on the person. Um, if you're a beach person, we got beaches you can go to. Um, if you have a friend who has a car, you have a car yourself, you can go. The nice thing about Virginia weather when you compare it to Boston weather is that it's warmer for a lot longer of the year. Um, it's like a fun laugh for me to think about going to a beach in early April in Boston. That could never happen, but I did in Virginia. <laughs> um, so it's definitely there if you want it. Um, and in the spring and summer months, people definitely take advantage. And then in terms of the dual enrollment courses similar to the AP um, courses. You can also search like William & Mary dual enrollment, but um, they definitely do take dual enrollment credits as well, so yeah. Okay, and then we have two questions in the chat about cars on campus and, and what that's like. So for your um, freshman year, you are not supposed to have a car on campus. That being said, if you have a reason that you need a car to get to religious services, to get to a doctor's appointment, work, something along those lines, you're able to um, kind of request to be able to get a permit and you'll get one um, that way. And so you're able to park on campus. 
Uh, but not having a car, I did not have a car on campus until this year as a junior. And I definitely was totally fine without a car. You can, you know, walk from the furthest parts on campus in about like 15, 20 minutes, like Noada was saying earlier, but you can also bring a bike on campus, which makes that about a five minute bike ride. So you can get everywhere pretty easily. And then in addition to that, we have our WADA bus system. So the Williamsburg um, public transportation, we're able to access completely for free with our student ID cards. So that'll take you kind of further out all the way to like a Walmart or the Target, which is really great. So you're able to kind of get anywhere that you need to go. Uh, and tons of things are within walking distance. So, you know, we have a drugstore, we have grocery stores, we have plenty of restaurants and things like that. So I definitely think it's totally fine without a car, but um, once you are an upperclassman, you also are able to have a car as well. In terms of tips for applying, we are not the people who read applications, so I can't <laughs> give any sort of like real inside scoop, but I would just say be yourself. Um, yeah. William and Mary really values people who are authentic and honest. So don't try to be anyone other than who you are. And that'll, that'll give you the best shot. Absolutely. All right. If there are any last questions, we can stay for a minute or so longer. But if not, and if not, yeah, welcome, like, welcome to like William and Mary, and thank you all for coming today. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and evening. Um, and if you have any remaining questions, please feel free to use the emails that we dropped in the chat. We would love to talk to you all more. Thank you, guys. Thank you.